Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful April day here on San Juan Island. And it's tea time. I don't actually have any tea with me today because I've been grooming horses and horse hair and tea don't go very well together. So I opted out of the tea today and I just have grooming equipment instead. But I thought I would share with you all a little bit about what I'm thinking this week. So behind me here is Sassafras. Sassafras is a fairly new Mustang to our herd. And this week he got to go out with the big boys. So we can see Ari up on the hill behind him, my stallion. And down here we've got Raz and Atlas. So Sassafras is brand new to the herd. He is five years old. He's from Antelope Valley and my daughter adopted him and has been working with him up at my home where we have taller fences and all of the appropriate equipment for new Mustangs. But he's graduated. He gets to come out here to the pastures. Cause I mean, look at that. What horse wouldn't want to live there? So Sassafras is uh, very, very friendly. He may come over and visit a little later. He may not, I don't know. But I thought I wanted to talk about in with the new. So as I was grooming horses today, I was thinking about how a lot of my students come with old habits they really would like to replace with new habits. And the tendency is to see how fast we can get rid of the bad stuff. But I really prefer to look at it the other way around. And that is, what can we bring in that is new and good in the horse's experience so that the old stuff falls away? So if I use this example of the herd integration, Sassafras is new. He's our new youngster here. And obviously I'm not getting rid of any horses. Um, my horses are here to stay, but there is old herd dynamics that are going to fall away with the addition of the new young one. And what I notice is when there's a new young horse in the herd, you will see a lot of parental aspects come up in the older horses. Some of them will play more because they have a young one to play with. Some of them will discipline more because they feel like the young one should grow up. Um, you're going to see all sorts of interesting behaviors in a herd when you introduce a new young horse. And I really like the idea that anytime you introduce something new into a system, old patterns will fall away. And so I have a pretty relaxed, settled herd. I talked at tea time a little while ago about how I felt like they were so relaxed and so steady that maybe they didn't bond together as well as I might hope. Well, with the addition of the little one here, I am finding all of them are becoming a lot more connected. Um, the little one adds a sense of novelty, a sense of interest. They're all taking turns uh, guiding him and being there for him as a bit of a parent. He's five, so he's not a baby, but he still has a lot of very young characteristics that the older horses can guide him through. And I'm seeing him just bring out the best in all of my horses. And that's really fun. Carrie says, we've just introduced a new yearling into a twosome of mares. We're witnessing some interesting behaviors. Yeah. So, you know, new behaviors aren't always good. Some of them are going to be challenging. Uh, in this case, I've been thrilled. I've sort of seen nothing but good behaviors added to my herd with the addition of this new one. But that's all about setting up your foundation. What's your foundation of emotional resilience in your horses? So when you add something new, it builds new and beautiful patterns for them. 
This is what I work with in all of my training. A lot of people come to me with horses that have really bad patterns, really unpleasant, difficult, reactive, defensive patterns. And the tendency is we want to get rid of those patterns as fast as possible. But those patterns are there for a reason. Those difficult patterns are protecting the horse in some way. And I don't want to take away the protective nature of those patterns before I have introduced something better, something that they can lean on. Um, I don't want to make them less than, I want to make them more than. So that might mean working from a little bit more of a distance for a while. That might mean expecting less of them for a while. The way I really like to look at it is every horse has a sense of identity, who they are, and they want you to understand them. Now, you don't need to know their story. If they're head shy and they don't like their ears being touched, you don't need to know why, but you do need to know that's part of their past. And their identity will not always be a horse that's head shy and doesn't like their ears being touched. Their identity is some combination of their past self and their future self. But you have to let the horse know that you understand their past self before you can start adding enough experiences that they start becoming their future self. They want to have an identity. They want to be known as an individual that's different from all the other horses. So I don't know if you guys saw that Raz there was just pushing uh, Sassafras a little bit and Sassafras yielded beautifully and then came back into alignment with Raz. And that's what it's supposed to look like. A push is just, you weren't paying very much attention, which young horses very often aren't paying very much attention. And then they get a little push from an older horse. They pay a little bit more attention and they come back. So if we think of horses having an identity, an identity that is unique to every other horse in the herd, each one of them wants to be known for who they are. And the way you show them that you know them is by giving them attention in the right ways. And what I mean by that is when they feel at their best, if you pause and let them feel it, don't stroke them, don't talk to them, don't distract them from it, just let them feel their very best selves. When that happens and you pause and you let them fully experience it, they can see that you understand them that you read that cycle of emotions they're going through. And then conversely to that, when their anxiety is starting to build for any reason, um, and I call this pre-concern. So what happens before they go to fight or flight? If you are getting into that pre-concern state and you know their stress is rising, take some action. That shows the horse very obviously that you know how they are different from all their friends. So you can only respond to one horse at a time. If you've got four horses in your herd, like I do, um, you're going to pick one to work with. And that one, you are responding to that horse first off by who is their past self? What are the things I know about you from yesterday? Do I know that you don't like your right side being touched, but you like your left side being touched? Can I show you that I understand that? And that doesn't mean I'm not going to touch the difficult side. It means if I touch it, I'm going to touch it as I'm leaving. I'm going to touch it as I'm moving on. So I show the horse a level of sensitivity. I know what you don't like, and I'm going to keep it so brief that you know that I know that we both know what your past self was all about. Then on the side that you do like, on the side that's good for you, 
when you feel your very best, I'm going to pause and I'm going to let that horse feel all the very best feelings. It sounds too simple, but what I find is if you can show horses that you understand their past self, then you get permission to show them that you understand their future self, what they're becoming. And the way you do that is you test the edges of what was difficult yesterday and see if it's still difficult today. That lets them show you today, I am braver, I am stronger, I am better than I was yesterday. And when you go to touch that spot that's not usually okay, but today it is, and then when you touch it and their ear flicks and you see them really in a sensory experience of enjoying that moment, you pause and you let them remember it. That is creating a new memory, bringing in the new that will replace the old. We are becoming new every single day. Whether it's the herd structure that's becoming new as I started out talking about sassafras joining my herd, or whether it's the individual becoming new or the relationship becoming new. You become new by testing the edges of what wasn't okay yesterday and seeing what might be different or new today. And if it isn't, that's okay. You work around it. I truly believe that horses want to keep growing and expanding and becoming better versions of themselves. So, if you respect the edges of what's difficult, but still touch them, okay? And this is theoretical and metaphorical and all of that too. So it's not just the place on your horse's body, it's the task that they couldn't do before, or the place in the woods that they wouldn't walk before, or whatever it is that was difficult to them before. You could try the edge of it. You don't have to dive into the middle of the difficulty. Just test the edge. Today, are you braver and stronger and happier than you were yesterday? And if you are, I'm really glad we tested it so that then we can pause there and let the horse remember how surprisingly good that was. So this is how I approach all my training. Everything that is impossible for a horse, that's part of their past personality. And that's okay. I'm going to show them first that I understand that. And then we're going to step into the beginnings of the future, which is what are the edges of what was impossible for you yesterday that might be okay for you today. And as we tickle the edges of the comfort zone, it's going to expand. I do not believe that you have to put yourself into discomfort to learn and grow. You can. That's an option. It's faster. But you don't have to. You can just tickle the edges of what's uncomfortable and the comfort zone will grow. And that's where I love this idea of horses and humans will fight for their identity. So I'll give you an example. Uh, my stallion Ari is a horse that does not like anything new. At least that's what his past self was. Um, you put a new thing in the paddock, that place in the paddock is now dead to him. He just doesn't go there. He doesn't look there. He doesn't investigate it. It's not a thing. So he doesn't like new things. He avoids new things. That's a little bit of his past personality. It's my job after I show him that I understand that. And the beginning of our conversation is about understanding who he is from the past to this per first to this current moment. Then I'm going to tickle the edges of that. Who are you today? Is there something a little bit new that might tickle your curiosity? that we could do for a short enough amount of time that to your surprise, it was fun, not overwhelming. And then we're going to rest on that. 
and remember that new part of his personality that is growing and developing. Over time, Ari will become a horse that loves new things. That will be his new identity. And he will fight for that identity once he owns it. So once he's had enough experiences where new things happened and he surprisingly enjoyed them, he's going to think of himself as a horse that wants to go experience new things. I could force him to do it, but it's way more fun to just take it a step at a time and just introduce those new things a little bit at a time, tickling the edge of his comfort zone until it's bigger. <laughs> Julie says, tickling the edges sounds like a great plan. And I'm going to give this a go with McCoy, whose past self doesn't love a certain new horse. I've been avoiding rather than tickling from being overprotective for both of them. Yeah, Julie. So McCoy doesn't, his past self doesn't like the new horse. And you don't want to dive into the middle of that because someone might get hurt. But if you could tickle the edges of it and then withdraw just as he's starting to enjoy it, you're going to find his future self the self that's becoming is a horse that goes, I love this new horse. How long have I been waiting for a friend like this? But it's all about tickling the edges of the possibility of what that future self is going to become. So this is Sassafras. He's our new herd member and he is doing a beautiful job of tickling the edges of everybody's comfort zone in my herd and helping them become better versions of themselves. And he's just doing that by being him, by being the new addition. And there's Ari and Raz. They're gonna go for a little bit of a canter down the hill. They're all going to see Atlas. And it's pretty fun watching them all bond together like this. And Atlas is being very calm and quiet at the bottom of the field, as is his nature. <laughs> so, as you can see, my herd has a whole new playful edge. There's nothing like adding a five-year-old into the mix to bring out the youthful natures of everybody. And uh, they're getting along great. So thank you guys for letting me share them with you. Thank you for letting me share tea time and a few ideas about bringing in the new. And I hope that's helpful. I'll be back next Tuesday and let me know if there's any questions or topics you'd like me to cover in the future. Have a great day.